Well, hello friends, it's Amy Ferlici at the Gathering Inspiration Stamp Studio. And today I have another super cute little, I'm kind of trying to flip it all around here, just another fun treat holder idea for you. I made these treats for everyone that attended our one day retreat last weekend. And then they were shipped out to anyone that got what I call a retreat in a box. If you're not local and you still kind of want that retreat experience, um, you get make and takes and pillow gifts and a goodie bag. It's just a fun little box of goodies, basically. Um, and I will tell you if you are interested in something like that I do it two times a year in the spring and in the fall so if you're not already signed up for my email list that's the best way to keep updated on the next retreat in a box and then lots of other events and promotions and things I have going on so the link to sign up for my email list is right here in the details to that YouTube video so just check that out um, like I said in the details it's right there you can go ahead and subscribe anytime or on my blog you can do it there too at gatheringinspiration.com so Okay, I have to show you guys so many fun. I'm like, I just love making little treat boxes. So this is just kind of a little triangle treat holder type of thing. So I want to, where to begin? Let me tell you, um, in terms of paper, I used a piece of the beautiful, this is the brightly gleaming designer series paper. So you can see one side is um, not quite as snazzy. It's still beautiful, but this other side with those copper accents, right? And you can kind of see the same thing on this paper as well all the beautiful copper detail on that. So just a beautiful pack of designer series paper. This piece, oh, and actually I should mention I'm using some of our new grid paper. This is a holiday grid paper and I was looking for the item code, which is not right here. So I will include it in the details to this YouTube video. Everything that I use on the project that we're making, I'll include the item codes and then I'll include it for the grid paper as well. So if you're interested in getting this, it's actually fun green on one side and then the pretty, kind of real red the toile um, paper on the other side. So beautiful paper too. Okay, so back to what I was originally telling you. I have a piece of designer series paper that measures four inches by nine inches, okay? And then everything else is just scraps of paper. This is another piece we're gonna use for part of our tag. Ooh, yeah, actually you can see that is what we made the treat out of right there, right? And then the opposite side is that beautiful kind of floral, wintry floral imagery there too. So what we are gonna start off with, actually I should scoot these things out of the way a little bit so we have room. I'm also gonna give you a preview of our new Stampin' Trimmer. Oh my gosh, I've just started playing with this so I'm kind of still getting my feet wet in terms of using it I'm gonna make sure you can see it again comes with this is the cutting blade and this is the scoring blade so they're both right here on the same track um, and I'm going to try to make sure to use my scoring blade, not my cutting blade, because I don't want to cut anything. Um, okay, so with this paper, we are going to start, and I'm, it's kind of a learning curve here, trying to, it just, it kind of locks into place. You just have to flip it up um, with a little, not muscle really, but it just doesn't flip super easily, I guess I'll say, because they don't want it flopping around. So, okay, we're going to line up our paper at four and a half inches, because that's halfway of our nine inch. Uh, strip and we're just going to score it. So I'm going to run back and forth a couple times there with my scoring blade. And then we actually need to, let's slip this guy out of here now. We are going to line this up. So I'm just trying to line it up right along here. So I know I meant, actually it's probably easier to line it up in this side at four inches. And I want to make a little tick mark. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to flip the paper over. I should have done that before. Okay, so we're lining it up again. We've got a four inch wide piece of paper. We wanna make a little tick mark at two inches. Make that a little bit bigger so I can actually see it. And then we're gonna flip the paper around. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So again, line it up over here at four inches. And they've got the beautiful lines all the way down. So you wanna make sure your paper is straight too, especially when you're cutting and scoring, you're gonna make your little tick mark there. Now we are gonna score. So I'm gonna slide. And again, you just have to kind of lift up. Did you hear it kind of click just a little bit? It just pops into place, which is really nice, like I said, so it's not flopping all over the place. Um, okay, so we are going to, I'm gonna put that down. So the idea is you wanna find your tick mark up at the top along the two inches, and then you want to find your score mark at four and a half inches, and you're just gonna score from your tick mark down to the score mark. And we're gonna do that on all four sides, okay? So I am just gonna keep kind of rotating my paper. I'm gonna find that score mark in the middle and the tick mark down at the bottom this time. You can probably not even see it, but there's a little tick mark right there. I've got my score mark there. So I'm gonna score again. 
And then I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna do it again where my tick mark is. Score mark, so you get the idea. We're gonna do it on all four sides. One more score mark and tick mark. We're good to go. Okay, so beautiful. I haven't even really trimmed anything yet. I've just been playing, making these with it so far. So we're gonna have lots of fun playing with our new trimmer. And as soon as I have info on when this is gonna be available, I will let you know. If you're a demonstrator, certainly you can order it. We could start ordering those on October 1st. So grab it while you can. They're trying to figure out, I think, um, uh, demand. You know, they want to make sure they have enough for everybody. So they're going to keep us posted on when it will be available based on what they think demands are so that it doesn't run out too quickly. So, okay, you can see I just folded those in. I'm going to scoot the trimmer out of the way. And I probably should have folded along the bottom one there too. Okay, so this is the idea. Here's our little triangle fold treat box. So can you see how that just folds right up like that? So, okay, we are going to punch little holes and it's easiest if you kind of flip that back open and we're gonna just punch holes and you just kind of eyeball it there's no real science to this um, the one thing I will say is you want to make sure I guess when you put it together you want to make sure that both of these are on the outside and both of these are on the inside so that it's not cockeyed okay so we're just gonna put those two together and then punch right there. Okay, now we are gonna grab, this is my, this was something that everyone received in their goodie bag too, was this is the beautiful old olive on one side and pretty peacock on the other side, the reversible gorgeous ribbon. It's actually in the um, annual catalog, but I thought it worked so well with this suite of products that I had to use it a bunch <laughs> on projects that we made for the make and takes. It was part of the goodie bag. So you can see how I'm just kind of feeding that through. Now, because that one went on the inside, I wanna make sure this flap goes on the inside too. So we're just gonna keep feeding that through. Okay, so we're gonna put it through this one that's on the inside first, and then the other little flap that's gonna go on the outside of it. And we've got lots of extra in there, don't I? But I need a bunch. So that's the idea, right? You can kind of see how that's going to fold up. Before I tie it up, because in the last video, I forgot to do that. So I made sure I put my candy out. So of course, I had to fill it with little um, treats. I tried to find something copper, but that's really hard. So I went with gold and silver. So we've got some Werther's and some Hershey Kisses. We're just going to pop a few of these in here. So it's just a fun little... You wanna make sure it doesn't pop out the sides, right? So that may be, there we go, I'm gonna say that. Maybe that's one more than I need. I couldn't remember how many I put in there, so we'll do that. Cause you don't want it to fall apart on itself. And now we are gonna just tie a pretty bow on top here. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then we get to make a beautiful tag to go on here too. Let me find my scissors. We're just gonna snip that off. Scoot this stuff out of the way. I'm already eyeing <laughs> that Hershey Kiss. I'm like, oh, you you guys probably know what's going to happen to that after the video is done, right? <laughs> you know, I have to make sure the candy is okay for everybody, right? Okay, so there is step one, right? So now we're going to make the cute little tag. Yeah, actually, we're going to go with that as the front. That was the other thing I should have thought about because those are upside down. So this is going to be the front of our treat. Yes, there we go. Okay, so now... We are going to do a little bit of stamping. I have the beautiful, I love, oops, it's coming out there, the So Many Stars stamp set. So we are using the sentiment, where did it go? Right here. May you enjoy this beautiful season. But can you see all the other awesome stamp set here? We've got season greetings. Sending you love and plenty of cheer. May your days be bright throughout all the year. That one's cute, huh? Hoping your Christmas wishes come true. Oh, holy night, the stars are shining, are brightly shining, excuse me, love and peace, and then a bunch of beautiful star images. It's, there's an awesome framelit set. We're not using that here. Um, actually, stay tuned because I'm working on my next class to go that will be featuring this So Many Stars bundle. It is beautiful. You're going to want it, I promise. Uh, okay, so yeah, anyway, this is the stamp set that we're using. So I have, let's see, I've got my sentiment 
May you enjoy this beautiful season. Oops, that is upside down. With my pretty peacock ink. So nice, easy, tap, tap, tap. We are going to press straight down, lift straight up. I love, I love when they combine fonts here too. So can you see kind of the, and actually they've got uppercase, lowercase, and then some of um, the cursive writing there too. Very, very pretty. Then I have Knight of Navy ink, and I just had to stamp a little something fun. Actually, I'm going to turn this this way. So again, that nice, easy tap, tap, tap. Press straight down and straight up, and there we go. Okay, and I think I caught the edge there, but that's all right. We're going to cut it off with our, what am I, what am I using? We are using some fun framelits. Actually, this is one of the labels from the Smooth Sailing dies. You can see all of the other dies that come in this pack, but I loved, so this is a really versatile set. Obviously, they've got all this, this fun kind of nautical imagery, but then they've got that fun little label right there, and then this fun little label that we're gonna use right there. The other thing we're going to do, we are gonna cut a circle with our stitched shape dies. We're actually using, this is, I've got the other one out here. This is the second largest. There's one larger still that I must have on another project somewhere. Okay, here we go, let's get this stuff out of the way. All right, so let's die cut these little guys here. Okay, got our die cutting machine. I've got my magnetic platform. So I'm gonna put my paper and my framelit, and then this one I need to line up. That one I just need to make sure it doesn't go off the edges, it doesn't really matter. And this one, and it's kind of winging around. So you guys know that, right? When you're using the magnetic platform, if your framelit or die moves, you just have to move your paper. I always tell the ladies at class, you cannot fight the magnetic field, right? And you just can't, you'll keep, people complain, it keeps moving, okay, move your paper. Move it to a spot where it won't move it, <laughs> and it'll be fine. All right, so we're going to pop that little circle out. You can just kind of barely see the stitching around there, right? And then more stitching on this one, too. How about that? May you enjoy this beautiful season. Love it. Okay, we're going to scoot this all right out of the way. And now we can start putting this little guy together. So I have, this is just a little strip that I had already pre-cut. This is the denim ribbon. So I'm just gonna do just about like that. And we're gonna put that right on our circle. So let's start with that. I'm just gonna add some adhesive. I'm gonna kinda lay that right down there like that. Then I want to use, I have to show you guys, I realized it's better if I lay them out flat than try to hold on to them. These are star foil elements, I think they're called. I'll get the exact name and the item codes, like I said, um, in the details to the YouTube video. And, oh, by the way, if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button right down there too. Okay, so these foil elements, you get five of these sheets, so two big stars, two little stars, two ornaments, you can kind of maybe see them better this way, right? You can see the ornaments, and then sprigs. You've got four different sprigs, and then five sheets of this. So tons and tons of fun little copper foil accent elements. So what we are gonna do, and they just pop right out. So they're perforated, so you can just kind of pull this little baby out, and that's all we need. There, you can see it better down there, can't you? When I hold it in my hand, you can't see it very well. Now, I forgot to bring over my little silicone craft sheet. So we are gonna use the back of my dimensionals. This is my little go-to when I forget because I don't wanna get adhesive all over this paper. So if I do it on here, it doesn't stick. It's almost like a little mini silicone craft sheet. It's my little cheater thing when I forget that, which I do all the time, unfortunately. So we're just gonna kind of put that right down on there. Then we are gonna flip this over and use a couple of our dimensionals. We're gonna pop those right on here. And maybe that can go right about like that. And then we need a little bit more bling, ladies. We're not done. So these are the star designer elements. They have a little mini glue dot on the back. So you just peel it off and pop it on. And there you go. Then we are going to put a couple more dimensionals on the back of this. And you could have maybe used the other side depending on what, you're, what look you're going for, and then we're just gonna pop that right on there. And there is our cute little treat. Isn't that awesome? Oh my gosh, so here's the other one, 
right? So you can do them. I did them in many, many different patterns. And then the fun was trying to decide which pattern of circle is gonna work best with the pattern on our little treat box. So thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed that cute little project. Uh, make sure you hop over to my blog at gatheringinspiration.com. I always have lots of fun um, ideas and information on there. And I do Facebook Live videos every single Friday or most every single Friday, right? So if you grab the host code from my blog at gatheringinspiration.com, when you go to shop, use that host code. You always get the two free cards that I demonstrate on Facebook Live that week. And your name goes into the drawing that I do on Fridays on Facebook Live to win more free stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I I hope you enjoyed these treats. I hope you were inspired today and I hope everybody has a great day. Bye everybody.